So in this video, we're gonna have a look at rationalizing the denominator. Again, make sure you've got some paper, making some notes on some of these before you have a go. So rationalizing the denominator just means that we wanna make this denominator here, okay, a whole number and not a third anymore. That's all it means. And so we are gonna create an equivalent fraction, so the same fraction, but where there's not a third on the bottom. Thinking about this in another context, if we wanna make an equivalent fraction, a fraction something like a half, we can times the top and bottom by two or anything we like and that would make two quarters. Okay, now these are equivalent fractions, but they're written in slightly different ways. The fraction on the left has a two on the bottom, the fraction has a right has a four, on the right has a four on the bottom. So we're gonna do the same with this. We're gonna write an equivalent fraction, but it's not gonna have a root five on the bottom anymore, okay? So there is one thing that we can times the bottom by, that root five by, to ensure that we get a whole number. So if I rewrite this, Okay, there we go. So there's something we can times the bottom by to make it a whole number, and we've seen this before. We can times it by root five, and that would make it root 25, which turns into the whole number five, so that would work. I'm just gonna apply this same logic to all of these questions, so I'm just gonna times the top and bottom by root five to make sure it's an equivalent fraction. So on the top, we get three root five, and on the bottom, we get root 25, which is just five. Okay, and again, you can write that working out down there for the bottom if you want. Okay, five, root five times root five is root 25, which gives us five. So there we go. That is our final answer there. We've rationalized the denominator. It's no longer a third on the bottom. It's the whole number five. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so a little bit more lengthy in the wording here. Rationalize the denominator of three over root six, giving your answer in the form root a over b, where a and b are integers. So let's have a look what happens when we do the same process here then. So we've got a root six on the bottom. So let's times the top and bottom by root six. Uh, to get rid of that third on the bottom. So times root six, times root six, there we go. So we get three root six on the top, and on the bottom we get root 36, which is six. Okay, so this is where this extra part of the question is gonna come in then, because it says to write it in the form root a over b. Now at the moment we've got this three in front of the root six, so that means this fraction must simplify. So if we think to the side, I mean, let's forget that the root six exists for the moment. Let's think about the fraction three over six, similar to what we've got at the moment, but without that root six on the top. Now this fraction simplifies, the top and bottom both divide by three, it simplifies down to one half. So we can apply that same logic to this one. I'm gonna divide the top by three, I'm gonna divide the bottom by three, I'm gonna simplify it. So we get one root six on the top, don't have to write that one, we can just write root six, and we get two on the bottom. So root six over two. There we go, that's in the form that the question's asked for. A is six, B is two, and we've managed to simplify that as well. So do have a look out for this if you can simplify. Okay, let's have a look at another. Okay, last question here before you have a go. Rationalize the denominator of one over eight root eight, and giving your answer in the form root two over A, where A is an integer. Okay, let's write this out, one over eight root eight. Let's apply the same logic then. So let's times the top and bottom by root eight. See what we get. So on the top, one times root eight is root eight. And on the bottom, we have eight root eight times eight. So that's one root eight there, isn't it? Even though we don't write that. So one times eight is eight, and root eight times root eight is root 64 or eight. So let's just work this out slowly. So eight times root 64 is eight times eight. So I'm gonna get 64 on the bottom there. So let's have a look what we've got. If we just re rewrite that, we get root eight over 64. Okay, it's still not in the form that it's asking for though, because the question does say, write it in the form root two over a. So this question does simplify, and that's because root eight simplifies. So root eight can also be written as root four times root two, which is two root two. So actually that simplifies down, I can write that as two root two over 64. Again, still doesn't quite match the question there. I've got this scenario like in the last question where I can divide the top and bottom by two because we have two root two on the top, 64 on the bottom. So if we divide those both by two, we get root two on the top and 32 on the bottom. And that's our final answer there. Well, that was quite a long one for this type of question, there's quite a lot going on there. We had first rationalizing it here, then we simplified the bottom, and in a separate step I simplified the top. We could have done that in one step really here, simplified the bottom, simplified the top, 
and then we got our final answer which we could still simplify so that was quite an extensive one there but let's have a look you're gonna have a go at a few questions just make sure you're following this process here looking at rationalizing that denominator by times in the top and by, by whatever that root is okay so here's some for you to have a go at make sure you pause it and have a go and here they are so pause there and I'll go over them in a sec okay so rationalizing this first one times the top and bottom by root 7 and we get 2 root 7 over 7 final answer and so the next one times the top and bottom by root 10 and you end up with 5 root 10 over 10 Okay, now there's no hint in these questions here, but you might have spotted the top and bottom there, both divide by five. So if we divide the top by five, we get root 10, and the bottom by five, we get two. Okay, but as a side note, that is actually rationalized. The question didn't say to write it in a certain form, but it does actually simplify down, which is always worth looking out for. Now this next one, rationalize four over root eight. So let's times the top and by root eight. And this root 8 keeps coming up here. Root 8 isn't actually fully simplified, so we could simplify that for, to start with, but I'm just going to leave it, see what happens. So it's times the top and bottom by root 8. So we get 4 root 8 over 8. Okay, well, straight away we could simplify that. We could divide top and bottom by 4, and we get root 8 over 2. But then again, we should really spot that this root 8 here on the top isn't simplified, although that is rationalised. It was rationalised at this point here where we had the 8 on the bottom, but always looking to simplify with fractions. So we could have left it as 4 root 8 over 8, but more than likely a question is going to want us to simplify it down. So we have root 8 over 2, and then root 8 is, and I'm going to do this to the side, the square root of 8 is root 4 root 2, which is 2 root 2. So root 8 on the top is 2 root 2 over 2. Well, this just goes even further now. The top and bottom both divide by 2. So actually, all of that ends up as just being root 2. Well, there's a lot of steps there. So although we did actually rationalise it here, you can see if we simplify it all the way down, it goes all the way down to root 2. Times in the top and bottom by root 8 gave us that. Then we could simplify this fraction, which enabled us to get root 8 over 2. Then we could simplify this root 8 into 2 root 2, and the top and bottom then divided by 2 just to get us all the way down to the bottom there. All right, quite an interesting one. Right, and then the last one here, times the top and bottom by root 6. Let's rewrite this. 3 over 6 root 6. I hope it's not as many steps as the last one. Times the top and bottom by root 6. Let's see what happens. So on the top we get 3 root 6. Root 6 doesn't simplify, thankfully, for this one. And then on the bottom, we get 6, lots of root 36. 6 times root 36, which is 6 times 6, so we get 36 on the bottom. Now again, not as many steps here, but that one does actually simplify. The top and bottom both divide by 3. So top, dividing the top by 3 gives you root 6, and dividing the bottom by 3 gives you 12. There we go, and that was our final answer there. Right, okay, perfect. Let's have a look at the next bit. Okay, so similar process to the, to the ones before, but we've got two pieces now on the top. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use the same logic. We're going to times the top and bottom by root 5 and just see what we get. Okay, so now we know on the bottom we get 5. Root 5 times root 5 is root 25, which is 5. Uh, and on the top, now we've got to times both these pieces. So really, we've got something like our single brackets that we looked at. So it's something like 1 plus root 5 in the bracket multiplied by this root 5. So the root 5 times 1 gives us root 5. Copy the symbol plus. And then root 5 times root 5 gives us 5. There we go, so we've rationalised that. It doesn't simplify. Top and bottom don't, don't, don't both divide by 5. Just be careful. This whole top part here doesn't divide by 5, even though this 5 here does. Root 5 does not divide by 5. Okay, so it doesn't simplify. That is our final answer there. And let's have a look at another one. Okay, here we go. So, 3 minus root 2 on the top, 2 root 2 on the bottom. Let's do the same thing again, times the top and bottom by root 2, and see what we get. So on the top, root 2 times the 3, 3 root 2. And root 2 times this negative root 2 gives me negative root 4, or minus 2. Perfect. And then on the bottom, 2 root 2 times root 2, is going to give us, I'm going to do this to the side, 
it's going to give us two lots of, remember because this is one root two, so it's two times one which is two, root two times root two is root four, two root four, which is two times two, which just gives us four. Lovely, so on the bottom, four. And there's our final answer. Three root two minus two over four. Right, okay, here are two questions for you to have a go at. So pause the video, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, the answers for these then. So the first one, times the top and bottom by root three. On the top we get two root three minus three over three. And there's your first one. And so the second one, times the top and bottom by root five. We get three root five plus five over two times root 25 on the bottom here we're going to get two root 25 which is two times five so 10 on the bottom and there are your two answers okay we've got one more question to look at oh this question doesn't look very nice okay so what i've done is i'm going to go over one this one on the left and i've got one for you to have a go at so over here we've got 12 over and on the bottom we've got another fraction plus root five, so one over root five plus root five on the bottom. Let's have a look if we apply the same logic here. If we times the top and bottom by root five, let's see what we get. Top's easy enough, we get 12 root five. Let's have a look what happens on the bottom. I've got two pieces here to times by root five, so looking at this fraction to start with, if I times a fraction by a number, or by a, by a root in this case, it's gonna multiply that denominator. So actually what we're gonna get for the fraction part when we times that by root five is root five over root five plus, I'm going to times this root 5 by root 5, which is 5, so plus 5. Okay, doesn't look very nice. Now just having a look at this fraction here, root 5 divided by root 5, well anything divided by itself just equals 1. So root 5 divided by root 5 is going to be 1. So actually what we've got on the bottom here in total is 1 plus 5, and 1 plus 5 is 6. So let's have a look, we get 12 root 5 over 6. And again, this actually simplifies. So the top and bottom there look both divide by six, 12 lots of root five and six on the bottom. So dividing the top and bottom by six, we get two root five over one. Okay, we don't need to write anything over one, do we? So we can just leave it there as two root five. And there's a final answer. Right, there's one question on the right there to have a go at. So pause the video, have a go, and then I will go over it in a sec. <clears throat> okay, so the final question here, times in the top and bottom by root 3. On the top, we get 4 root 3. And on the bottom, times in that fraction, we get root 3 over 3. Sorry, root 3 over root 3. Add 3. So let's simplify that down. We get 4 root 3 over, let's see what's on the bottom there. On the bottom we have 1 plus 3, which is 4, and the top and bottom now both divide by 4. So top divide the top by 4, you get 1 root 3, divide the bottom by 4, you get 1, and again, we don't need to write that, so our answer for that is just root 3. Right, there we go, that's the end of the video. Uh, we're going to look at some slightly harder uh, rationalising on the last thirds video. Uh, so again, if you like this video and it's helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.